Hola, I'm Roberta. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making one of my favorite Spanish sauces. No, nope, I'm going to call it my very favorite Spanish sauce, Romesco. Once you've mastered this nutty, sweet, slightly spicy terracotta sauce, you're going to be slathering it on everything. This month in our recipe kit, we're serving it with beautiful little lamb cutlets. It's fabulous with seafood and we're doing a pescatarian version with blue mackerel. It would be great with prawns, with octopus. In Catalonia, where it originates, it's served with long, thick green onions of a sort called calçots. I've heard them called calcots, calshots, even caldots. But my mate Lennox, who spent some time in Spain, says they're calçots. So I'm going to go with that version. Whatever they are, they're delicious. They're not available outside Spain. So what we can use instead are some baby pencil links or some thick green onions. And I'm getting ahead of myself. The first thing we need to do is make a romesco sauce. So romesco is made from capsicum, onion. We're only going to use half because we're going to put the other half in our gazpacho and we will need to peel it. So we'll just get rid of the skin of that. The other thing is some tomatoes and some garlic. Later, we're going to add some beautiful sherry vinegar, some olive oil, some smoked paprika and some nuts. Now, in Spain, typically some dried chilies, either romesco chilies or nora chilies would be used. They're quite mild, but neither's available easily here. So I go with a long red chili and a little smoked pimenton. If you're not a fan of spicy food, you can leave the chili out and just use the sweet pimenton. So let's peel our onion. Quarter it. And we're just going to give everything a good drizzle of oil because we're going to put this in a very hot oven now until the skin blackens on the capsicum and the chili. The tomatoes are roasted. We don't really need the vine, so we might just pull them off the vine. And both the garlic and the onion are nice and sweet. So I'm going to pop that in the oven for about 20 minutes, then we'll have a look and see how it's going. Now a lot of romesco sauces use both nuts and bread to thicken it. I like this gluten-free version, not that I'm gluten-free, but it makes it easier if you're entertaining people who are, and I serve plenty of bread alongside to scoop up the sauce. So the nuts that I'm using are almonds and hazelnuts. They need to be toasted. You could toast them in a frying pan over a low heat, but I find that that's pretty uneven and we've got the oven on anyway. So I'm just going to pop this in the oven for three or four minutes, keep a close eye on it because the oven's quite hot just to get these toasted. So after about 20 minutes in the oven, you can see that our onion and our tomatoes and chili are nicely charred. So we're going to take them out. They don't need any more. Now there was one tip I meant to tell you, which I actually forgot, and that is to line the baking tray with baking paper, because it makes it much easier to clean afterwards. But never mind. There we go. And it also means that they won't stick as much. There's my garlic. The skin's left behind, that's fine. And our little tomatoes, which we're just going to squeeze out of their skin. This is all going to be blitzed up together anyway. I'm just going to pop that capsicum back into the oven for another 10 minutes or so because I want to get it really well charred and it's not charred enough at the moment. Then we can peel it. So while our capsicum is just finishing off in the oven, we can get everything else ready and it's really just a matter now of throwing it all into the food processor or blender. The garlic, we baked it with its skin on, so now we can just either pull the skin off if it comes away easily, or just squeeze it out like a tube of toothpaste and put that into the blender. There we go. The tomatoes, I want to leave as much of the skin behind as I can, so again, it's just a bit of a squeeze. 
won't matter if you get a tiny bit of skin in there because it's all going to blitz up anyway. So there we go, that's the last of our tomato. Do let it cool down enough that you can handle it. I'm being a little impatient here, but there's no need. You'll find it much easier to do when it's cooler. And our chilli. We just want to get rid of the seeds and the skin. It's not a lot of flesh on the chili but it does just add a nice heat so dust off the seeds and by all means leave the chili out if you or the people you're preparing the food for are not fans of heat it really doesn't matter it's delicious without it and now I'm just going to scrape that flesh, what little there is, off and pop it in. And if you get a few seeds in there, that's fine too. It's just going to make it a little bit hotter. Because most of the heat in the chilli, as you probably know, is in the seeds and the membrane. Yum, it smells fabulous too. Alright, there we go. We'll see how our capsicum is doing. So after another 10 minutes or so, you can see our capsicum is nicely charred and it's starting to collapse. So I'm just going to pop it into a bowl and cover it with some plastic wrap or a plate or something. I just want it to steam so that that skin softens a bit more and we can peel it off shortly. While our capsicum is cooling down and softening, we can get everything else ready. A good pinch of salt, some of our beautiful smoked pimenton, those almonds and hazelnuts that we roasted in the oven just for a few minutes, and let's go our beautiful Sanchez Romate sherry vinegar. This is from one of my favourite bodegas in Jerez. A couple of teaspoons of that. And that just adds a nice sharpness. If you didn't have sherry vinegar, you could use a nice sweet sour agrodolce uh, red wine vinegar. And a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. And we're just going to blitz that. Actually, I might blitz everything first and then add my olive oil up. Now your capsicum can sit around for an hour if you like, but you want to give it a good 15 minutes or so, so that it's cool enough to handle. And then we simply, it's still quite warm, get rid of all of that skin. I'm leaving it in the bowl because I want to get as much juice as possible. So we're going to peel that skin off. So once I've got most of the skin off, I'm just going to leave all that juice behind there. We'll actually pop that into our sauce for extra flavour. And we just need to get rid of the rest of the skin and the seeds and membrane. There we go. That's skin and seed free. That can go into our food processor. Rest of our skin off here. Scrape out the seeds. And there we go, that's the last of our seeds. Into there, I'll just get my blitzer and we'll blitz it up into that beautiful terracotta romesco sauce. There we go. Now, it's up to you how chunky or smooth you like it. I'm really not sure if it matters whether you add all of the oil with everything else, but I think you get a smoother result if you pop your oil in at the end and then just give it another bit. So that's what I like to do. Beautiful. All right. I might just get rid of this. I don't trust it. And here we have our beautiful terracotta. No, it looks a little paler than terracotta. Maybe it's more pumpkin coloured. Anyway, it smells fabulous. 
it tastes even better. I think you're going to eat it quite quickly, but if you need to, leftovers do keep in the fridge for a good week. You could dip asparagus into it, you could dip char-grilled leeks or green onions into it, serve it with lamb, with beef, with poultry or with seafood. Really, you can serve it with anything. It is, smells fabulous, mm, tastes so delicious. Romesco sauce. Enjoy.